In this video, we're going to look at how to add and subtract fractions. We will look at adding and subtracting fractions with the same denominator. We'll look at using fractions with different denominators. And we'll look at what happens when whole numbers, integers, are involved as well. We'll start off with our easiest example. So we're going to do 1 third add 1 third. In this example, the denominators, so that's the numbers on the bottom, the threes, are exactly the same. Now, if we look at what happens in a picture, we've got a third and a third. So both these rectangles have got one part out of three colored in. And we can quite quickly see that if we brought those red bits together, we'd have two of them, so we'd have two thirds. So all that's happened when we've added these fractions together is our top numbers, the numerators, the one add one have been added together to give two, and our denominator, the three, has remained the same. We can think of this as when we say it, we say one third add one third. If we were talking about objects, one apple add one apple, you'd have two apples. So the same thing happens with fractions. One third add one third is two thirds. Here's another example where the denominators are the same. They're both 12. So we leave that as 12 and add the numerators together. Five add two gives us seven. So five twelfths add two twelfths is seven twelfths. Sometimes we'll get an answer at the end that needs simplifying. In this example, we've got two ninths add one ninth. The denominators are the same, so we add the tops together to give us three ninths. We can quite quickly see here though that top and bottom are both multiples of three. So if we divide them both by three, we get an answer of one third. But what about if we're subtracting fractions? We're going to try 5 ninths minus 2 ninths. Let's look at that in pictorial form again. So at the bottom, we've got our squares divided into 9. 5 ninths are coloured in on the first one. If we take away 2 ninths, it means we're going to take away two of those boxes, so we'd be left with 3, hence we'd have 3 ninths. So we can quite quickly see that, just like with addition, the denominator stays the same. We're going to do the subtraction with the numerators. 5 minus 2 is 3. So we get 3 ninths. Let's try 8 fifteenths minus 1 fifteenth. Denominators are the same, so that stays as 15. 8 minus 1 is 7, so we get an answer of 7 fifteenths. Here's another example, 5 eighths minus 3 eighths. Denominators are the same, so we do 5 take away 3, it's 2 over 8. Both of these numbers are even, hence they're both multiples of two, so we can divide top and bottom by two and get an answer of one quarter. What about if we've got an integer involved? In this example, we've got five minus three sevenths. All we need to do is convert that five into a fraction with the same denominator as the other fraction. So we're dealing with sevenths. We're gonna change five into sevenths to do that, we know that there must be seven sevenths in each one. So five is five times seven over seven, so 35 over seven. And now we can subtract as before. 35 minus three is 32. The bottom stays the same, that is seven. Now this would work exactly the same way if our integer was the number being subtracted. It would work in the same way if we were adding. All we need to do is convert that integer into a fraction with the same denominator. But what about if our denominators are different? Let's try a half, add a quarter. Again, let's look at this in pictures. So here's a half of our square, and we're adding a quarter. Well, we can quickly see from that that a half is two quarters. Adding them together, we're gonna to get three quarters here. So there's our answer. But how can we do this sum without drawing the diagram? Well, we are gonna convert the half into quarters so that we've got the same denominators and then we can use our method from before. So two goes into four twice. So if we times the top and bottom of that half by two, we get two quarters, which we can now add one quarter to as before, giving us three quarters. Here's a similar example. We've got a 12th add two thirds. Looking at those denominators, we can see that three 
goes into 12 four times. So we're going to times that by four, we'll times the top by four to create our equivalent fraction. So this now becomes 1 12th add 8 twelfths, which is 9 twelfths. Then, if you like, you can simplify this because top and bottom are both multiples of 3. It's the same as 3 quarters. And again, we're going to do the same thing if it's subtraction. So we've got 5 sixths minus 2 thirds. 3 goes into 6 twice. So let's times top and bottom of the second fraction by 2 to create an equivalent fraction of 4 sixths. We can now use our method 5 sixths minus 4 sixths is 1 sixth. In this example, we've got 2 fifths add 1 sixth. If we try to use our method from before, we're going to struggle because there's nothing easy that we can multiply 5 by to make 6 or 6 to make 5. We've got a bit of a problem. So let's look at this as a diagram and then we'll see what we can do. So I've got a square chopped into 5 rows and 6 columns. If we colour in 2 of those rows we've got 2 fifths. One of the columns gives us 1 sixth. By adding them all together we can see that we've got 17 squares coloured in out of the 30 squares on the square. So the answer must be 17 over 30. Now at first glance, quite difficult to see the link between 2 fifths and a sixth and 17 thirtieths. So what's going on here? When we're doing fractions like this, where we can't just multiply one denominator to make the other one, we need to multiply both of them. So we're going to look for a number that both 5 and 6 go into. It helps if you can find the lowest common multiple because that creates less simplifying at the end, but it doesn't matter as long as it's something that both of them go into. Now, five and six both go into 30. To change two fifths into 30 fifths, we're gonna to have to multiply by six. So we'll multiply the top by six as well to give us 12 30 fifths. To change the six from the sixth into 30, we need to multiply by five. So we'll also multiply the top by five to give us five 30 fifths. So our equivalent fractions for two fifths and a sixth are 12 30 fs and 5 30 fs, which add together to make 17 30 fs. We've done the exact same sum as we've got in our diagram, but we've done it just using the numbers. Let's try 1 quarter add 5 6 now. So there are no whole numbers that we can multiply 4 by to make 6 or 6 to get 4, so we're going to need to change both of them. Well, 4 and 6 both go into 12. And that's the lowest common multiple of them. So let's convert these into equivalent fractions over 12. Well, 4 will go into 12 three times. So let's times top and bottom by 3. 6 will go into 12 twice. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 2. So our equivalent fractions are 3 twelfths and 10 twelfths, which if we add together gives us 13 twelfths. So a top heavy fraction, that is fine. You could convert it into 1 and 1 twelfth if you prefer but 13 twelfths is a perfectly good answer. We're going to use the exact same method for subtraction as well. So 8 fifteenths minus 2 ninths. This is a slightly trickier one, but again, let's think of our lowest common multiples. 15 and 9 both go into 45. So we're going to change these into equivalent fractions over 45 by timesing top and bottom of the first one by 3, top and bottom of the second one by 5, to give us 24 over 45 minus 10 over 45, which is 14 over 45. And that's that. So to summarize, if the denominators are equal, we just add or subtract the numerators, the numbers on top, and we keep the denominators the same. If the denominators are not equal, we convert one or both fractions into equivalent fractions with equal denominators, and then continue as above adding or subtracting the numerators. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel or check out some more of my videos by clicking on the links here.